Welcome back, we are here live in uh, Silicon Valley, heart of Silicon Valley, San Jose Convention Center. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program, we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, this is our fourth season with Hadoop Summit, Hadoop World, we've been covering the big data ecosystem when it was a small cast of characters, one of them was Yahoo, now becomes with Hortonworks, Cloudera, among others, huge ecosystem developing, and the theme here is enterprise grade, and solidarity in the community, really sticking together, not forking the community, staying together. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, and we're going to discuss uh, the Hadoop ecosystem here with uh, one of the Horton executives. Again, I'm John Furrier, I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, wikibon.org. Sean Connolly is here, he runs strategy for Horton Work. Sean, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you again. Thanks, thanks Dave, nice to be here, John. <laughs> so you gave a, a great keynote today, uh, I understand it's 24, 500 people here, is that right? It's, uh, I think it might be a little north of that, but yeah, it's a good that. crowd. 3,000, we hit 3,000? And it's almost, yeah, almost 70 uh, sponsors as well, which is way up from the 40 something. It's a great venue year. here, uh, really good space and yeah. uh, a lot of, lot of activity. You basically put forth uh, the architecture, the new data architecture, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about what you talked about in your keynote, and you sort of showed the, you know, the old way yeah, uh, and then say, okay, here's the new way. And the old way and the new way look similar, but you've got this new piece in here. All this unstructured data, you've got Hadoop, all these new tool sets, but they coexist, right? It's not a rip and replace. And that was sort of one of your key messages here. Talk about that a little bit and what you're seeing out there. Yeah, I think you know, the way we look at it, particularly in the uh, enterprise customer base, uh, when we talk about it, it's how do you extend the tra typical transactional processing to get at that interactions and observational data, which is all those new sources. Um, and so if you, if you can pull in a, uh, a, a data architecture, if you will, and introduce a peer to the existing systems and integrate it tightly, then you actually have a really sort of vibrant uh, solution for enterprises as they begin to evolve uh, their architectures towards uh, being able to deal with these staggering volumes of data. Um, so we're seeing you know, really a lot of that as Hadoop really has emerged as that, you know, that additional enterprise data system that's uniquely qualified to store massive uh, amounts of data at scale uh, for cost structures, frankly, that we're hearing in our customer bases, 10 to 100x less uh, per terabyte uh, cost, so very significant financial. Well, uh, and I want to ask you about that because when you look at s some of the initial instantiations of Hadoop, they started with a blank piece of paper. Mm -hmm. They were things that you couldn't do with the traditional RDBMS, and so, um, it was interesting to see that layout, that kind of schematic that you put forth, and it was, to me anyway, a very enterprise-oriented vision. So that's what you're seeing now, we're sort of, we're seeping into the enterprise, the enterprise requirements are starting to come in. Yep. Um, so talk about where we are. You talked about, you know, uh, this, this event last year, Jeffrey Moore was here, talked about crossing the chasm. Have we crossed that chasm? Is the so the enterprise ready, we heard Merv's talk that 31% aren't adopting, but you know, the balance are, nearly right. 70% I'm, are. I'm a half full kind of guy, yeah, so I yeah. like the fact that it's about 70% who uh, have some sort of big data strategy. Um, you know, as far as where things are, you, you're correct. Last year's tone was different than this year's tone. And it's by design and by maturation of, of the market in general, is we're, we're, we deal with a lot more mainstream uh, enterprise users uh, you know, there was, actually CIO.com had a uh, survey where it was big data went from like 30, 13% uh, of CIOs who had a plan to 37%. And yeah. if you look at the details behind that, uh, almost 60% of those respondents were, they deemed themselves laggard adopters, not even early adopters. And it came right? up as I think one of their top two or three initiatives that they were exactly. going to Exactly. So um, what we hear a lot from our, our, our customers is how do, we enable, how do we arm them with a message so they can uh, help bring the enterprise uh, across, right? So uh, there's a lot of entrenched skills on transactional processing, right? So if we can pitch, if we can sort of pitch a narrative where you're extending your architecture that can help you deal with these new ways and extend your skills and integrate with some of your tools, then it works really well and it gives people a path forward versus let me just rewrite everything from scratch Sean, again. Sean, I got to yeah. ask you, you've been on theCUBE multiple times, mm -hmm. we, you know, we talk off camera a lot, um, and, uh, but you're, you're a strategy guy over there, which means you dabble on the product side, have to look at the marketplace, you know, look at the chessboard in the marketplace, but also understand the product. So mm -hmm. really two, two questions uh, here. What's changed in the past you know, year? for you guys, since we last talked, what's the biggest change that's happened 
in the Hadoop ecosystem that you can point to. And then uh, the other thing is, is that um, what are the success um, parameters now in open source? If open source is going to lead and win, as Merv was pointing out, um, it's going to take catching up when the big players move in, and it's going to take some, some teamwork. So uh, what, are the, what are those metrics, what's, what are the telltale signs of that, that we're winning? And so what, what's happened in the past year, and what, how do we know when we're winning? So, um, a couple of factors in there is, uh, uh, if you look at the message that was delivered at this, uh, this conference, uh, this new technology called Yarn enables more workloads, um, interactive workloads, streaming workloads. Why is that important? Because we're seeing enterprises want and need that type of uh, solution um, and want to be able to leverage this platform for a wider range of use cases. That was not conversation we were having 12 months ago. 12 months ago was, I have a pilot or POC and I'm a little stuck in the mud on how to get this thing going forward. Um, we see a, a, a much broader uh, swath of the market. Really, I would argue a, a fair amount of mainstream brands um, who um, have been dealing with the technology for a while and are looking at either solving very particular uh, application needs or are starting to, uh, and in my session I uh, phrase that uh, agile data lakes uh, architecture as the way to phrase this next gen architecture. That's phrasing that I'm hearing back from the customer base. I don't know where this data lake came from. I look at it as an ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like <laughs> turbulent, a lot of different currents, a lot of different. But uh, if you know, if you look at mainstream enterprises, yeah. a lot of times they'll start with a pond, grow <laughs> it into a lake, right, and then they'll go from there. Right? Glass of water. Yeah. Uh, to your point, though, Sean, the, the emphasis on security that we've been hearing mm -hmm. is a big deal. So it's like uh, these enterprises. Look, maybe it's a line of business. Ah, I got this shiny new toy, and yes. now it's whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. That that data, that governance, that policy. That, is there any security edict that you're adopting? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. wait a minute, time out, let's, well, let's that's, bring that to the uh, you know, that's one of the things, if, if you l listen to me talk about a lot of these things, I'm very pragmatic as to where Hadoop is. It is on the right side of the chasm, it's, it's moving up. There's still a lot more work left to do, right? And in my session, for instance, um, I brought up Inmobi, who's a mobile advertising yeah. provider, where they've rolled it out at scale over the past three years and have built up technology that they contributed into open source for data lifecycle management. Um, that momentum, and then afterwards I had about a half dozen people saying, we're doing similar things, how do we get involved in the open source community? So, to your point is, the, uh, the momentum of open source model, uh, and the fact that it innovates faster than single vendors is, is what we're seeing. We're yeah, seeing yeah. that play out very you well. Yeah, it's what's funny, we always talk, um, Dave and I, and you, you've been following our career at SiliconANGLE, mm -hmm. Wikibon for a while, and you know we're open source content, so Dave and I always talk to folks about trying to get some support and, 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 and uh, expand our mission, and we always get the, what do you guys do? Where's the value, right? And so that's a question that Merv just brought up. Mm -hmm. In early pioneering businesses, people say, where's the value? Right, and so only a lot of early adopters will see that, but a lot of the mainstream guys that you guys are now uh, bringing to the market, crossing the chasm this year, always just saying, where's the value? What can you say, what can you point to specifically as saying, this is the value of Hadoop? Yeah, so I'll give you an example. A common pattern we're seeing across retail chain who have both web and brick and mortar is it gives them the place, the data lake, that they can bring in a true 360 degree view of the customer and how they interact, whether it's through mobile, web, brick and mortar, or what have you, and finally get that into a place where it's a reasonable cost and you could begin to really dissect it and analyze it and join it for true 360 degree, degree view analytics on that customer. So then you could begin to project how you can uh, target them much better. Um, that's always been talked about, that's been the promised land, and we're starting to see uh, you know, customers who, that's, that's one of their first areas. Um, they have other uh, areas uh, as far as filling the data lake. That tends to be one of the first ones, particularly if, if they have a mixed way of engaging customers or suppliers or what have you, right? Um, that is a rinse and repeat er uh, type of thing for very mainstream retail oriented brands. Yeah, and that has been the promised land. And in many ways, the, the, the old you know, BI and data warehouse business sort of failed to meet up, to live up to that promise. And, and I, I'll say it failed to live up to that promise. Well, and yeah. the reason was because you know, that vision was there on paper, but in implementation it would take you know, days or weeks or sometimes months to actually get to that point and the market moved so fast. So you, 
they talk about this notion of bringing analytic and transactional data together. Yep. In a way, that's kind of what your diagram showed. Um, and then you start to bring in, so I like the way Merv just said, you got, you got batch, you got real time, and you got interactive in the middle. And he said, today we're sort of in the interactive phase, but you have things you know, like streaming technology that are coming into play to allow machines to make decisions faster than humans can. So, um, do you agree with that sort of spectrum, and, and where are we on that spectrum? Uh, I, I clearly agree with that spectrum. I think it needs to be a multi-purpose uh, workload platform. Um, to, uh, Merv, the other point that Merv made was, uh, it's adding the context on the transactions back into the mix, yep. and that context may have come through web channels, mobile channels, or other new sources of data. Historically, that was exhaust. Now it's actually be able to be brought together. The other yep. uh, point is we have a customer, uh, uh, Newstar, and Mike at Newstar talks about uh, uh, it's a catch basin, so it's, it's the data goes through the existing systems, but he can get it in the Hadoop, so he can do the new analytics on it and not disturb what's running the business, right? And so that flexibility uh, and cost structures are really what drives it for him, and that's, that's really where we're seeing people All right, Sean, we got to wrap, we just got the, Sean says the plates yep. are backing up. The no, last no word we'll give you, um, running strategy, just summarize the bumper sticker, Hortonworks strategy for the audience. So, uh, we make no bones about it. I kind of like the tagline we rolled out recently. People say, you know, what do you do where it works? And uh, if you go to our website now, it's we do Hadoop. We're focused on making this an enterprise viable data platform. We feel it's that important for the market. Um, and we highlight the engineers who are behind the tech, driving it, working hard, so. Those um, tech athletes, as we say in theCUBE, um, I got to say, great show. I, what I love about Hadoop Summit and testament to you guys in Yahoo, Hortonworks and Yahoo for this is that you really make it about kind of the business, but it's really about the people and the code, right? So it's about you know, the developers. Yeah, we have a business mind. We all kind of want to make money. There's a business to be done here. But as a community, this is where the action is. And I've always said, and this has been a theme of our summer tour, these open source communities are the new standards bodies. Yep. This is the new IETF, this is the new IEEE. Those standards, the stacks are being developed and people are voting. And they're voting with their code, and they're voting with their feet, and they're voting with their writing the app. So uh, congratulations on having this great event. Hope you guys Thanks, keep Sean. it pure yep. uh, and don't get it too commercial oriented. Have me be an executive track in the future, but for the most part, great event. Yep. Um, Thank you. Sean Connolly here at Hortonworks, uh, VP of Strategy. Uh, great guest on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, live from Hadoop Summit. This is theCUBE, right back. Thanks, John.